Okay, so I'm just waiting for Dr. Blair to call me. Um, and then we can get started. Let's, oh, here we go. Dr. Blair, can you hear me? I'm here. Awesome. Okay, I'm going to put that right there. Okay. So I'm sorry, everyone, but this um, program that we're trying to use uh, did not let us broadcast, so to do side by side. And I am doing that, this application, because Facebook is so unreliable in this aspect. So I really apologize for this, and hopefully for tomorrow I will work really hard to get it all resolved. I just wanted to first and foremost remind everyone that everything that I share under the brand of Paleo Boss Lady is based on my own experience, okay? And a lot of it is, is through my, the learnings of my conscious lens regarding healthcare. It is by no means meant to treat, diagnose, or to be used in, you know, outside of traditional healthcare. So I don't want anyone to, to think that, you know, um, you do this without consulting your healthcare team. I have a healthcare team in place. So, um, you know, continue to do that. This is... All of these educational series, all of my blogs, all the work that I do as potentially the most healed person in the world who has multiple sclerosis using only diet and lifestyle. I take no drugs. I see no doctors, no Western medicine doctors. Um, I do no tests. I don't, I don't do anything. Um, I do blood work. I do blood work. Um, and so is me sharing how this is happening in real time. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about is that at the end of this, we will have questions. So what I would really recommend is that I really want all of us to try and listen a lot in the beginning. And I'm going to explain why. Not because, you know, when I teach in school and things like that and when I'm doing workshops, I take questions as they come up because I don't want people to have to hold their questions. But in this situation, I feel very strongly because a year ago I would get maybe one question about CBD a week. Now I get, like, at least 20. I mean, it's insane the number of people asking me about this. Now, I have dogs. You all know that I have dogs. So I should probably put my headphones back on. Um, you all know that I have dogs. So, and hopefully you can all still hear me. So, you know, that's just part of it. But the CBD education is what we're trying to do here. And we will leave at the end of all three of these series opportunities for question and answers. Okay, now, if you have a pen and paper, I want you to write this down. It's very important. There is a booklet, a PDF booklet, that you can receive from Elixinol and from Paleo Boss Lady. What you're going to need to do is you're going to need to email me at v at paleobosslady.com. That is paleo, P-A-L-E-O, boss, B-O-S-S, lady, L-A-D-Y dot com, V, okay? And in this subject, you're going to write, I consent to be signed up. I consent to be signed up. And then in the body, you're going to say to Elixinol, that's E-L-I-X-I-N-O-L, and Paleo Boss Lady newsletter. Very important. Now, I will go at the end of this, put all of this stuff up in the top. but that is how you're going to get the PDF, and the only and that's not because we want to make you do all this stuff. They're the government rules. We can't send you this without it. So that's what you need to do. Okay. So again, you're going to send an email to v at paleobosslady.com. You're going to put in the subject I consent to be signed up, and in the body you're going to put to Elixinol E L I X I N O L and Paleo Boss Lady newsletter. There you go. And then you will also, I'm going to give you a discount code just because you have to do all that stuff. And I know it's a lot of work. Okay. Tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel. We are going to have my good friend Arthur on, and he is going to talk a lot about sourcing. He's going to share his story. He's going to share some case, some, some real life stories that he's heard regarding CBD. He's also going to talk about testing, why they test, what they're testing for all kinds of stuff. And then the next day, Thursday, we're going to have my good friend Chris on, who was going to talk to us about marijuana, CBD, hemp, 
What is him? What's his, you know, one of the things in my conscious life that's becoming sort of my new mantra in 2018 is I'm not only looking at products as far as how clean they are before I put them in my body, but how clean are they in the whole entire environment? You know, what are they doing to our earth to produce, to make, all of those things? Like, I already only wear recycled clothing. Like, I'm already doing that, but I'm taking it even one step further. And that's a lot of what we're going to talk about regarding hemp, too, on um, Thursday. So there's, we're going to be talking about all of it. We're also going to make sure that as a consumer, you're not intimidated, you understand, you feel informed, and you can consider this as a modality in your bag of tricks. I have to tell you that it is in my bag of tricks, and that is the number one reason why I'm sharing it with you. So without further ado, um, I need to tell you that this is all being sponsored by Elixinol. They put together this team of experts. After talking with me, um, I got a hold of this company because a good friend of mine recommends, she's not recommended, she's like, yeah, you know, I have the CBD from this company, Elixinol. I'm like, CBD doesn't work, it never works. I've tried it forever, it just doesn't work. And she's like, well, do you wanna try this? I'm like, yeah, I'll try it, but it doesn't work. <laughs> And after 20 minutes, I was like, whoa, baby. And I kept using it. So I reached out to them, just like I reached out to Dr. Walls and ended up being on her board of directors and working with her and just like Jill Miller of Yoga Tuna. When I find something that helps me, I want to know the people behind it. And when I started talking to them to ask them why did this work for me and other things didn't work for me, come to find out there's a whole education that I didn't know. And it was much too much for me to retain. So back in October, we started working on this. So I want you all to know how this all came about. And then all of you guys, you know, asking me all these questions really spearheaded this. So without further ado, Dr. Blair, can you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. Okay. Can everyone hear Dr. Blair? I'm going to hold this up. So can everyone hear Dr. Blair? Just why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about the amazing person that you are. Well, I don't know about the amazing person, but I, I'm just uh, a family doctor, and I've been, uh, uh, I'm located in Washington State. Are you still there? I am. I, I guess I'm seeing the delay in, in the video, so uh, I don't think I'll watch the video. I'll just uh, stay off of the video. Um, and uh, just take your cues on, on audio. Yeah, so um, I'm a family practitioner. Um, it, I have an interesting course that I started off with. I joined the Army when I was 17, went to the United States Military Academy, and from there I spent a couple years in the artillery. Then I moved on to, um, uh, I was able to go to medical school and became, uh, did residency as a family practitioner, and I spent uh, the next 20 years uh, in the Army, and I retired in 1996. I was looking for different things to do, and I, I ended up uh, doing um, some special work in Newfoundland as a family practitioner and in the Arctic Circle. Um, and then I had a, a colleague invite me to a program he was doing uh, for disease management uh, that was in Augusta, Georgia. So I joined him there, and I started a program uh, disease management for kidney failure patients. Wow. I was working with uh, that program for about seven years, and I really sunk my teeth into uh, prevention and how I could make a huge difference in people's lives with serious problems using a dietary approach uh, for uh, the care and the complications that people were facing, as well as saving huge amounts of uh, money in, in that particular process. I partnered with a dietitian at the time, and, and it was a real awakening to me as to the impact that dietary things had uh, for such a serious disease. Um, and then from there, I left the company, and I started working with that dietitian, and we formed a company called Pro Health Advisor, and we were starting to use the new medical nutrition therapy to help people who had complex diseases. <clears throat> And um, it was amazing to see the benefits that we saw with people who were in chronic pain, who had diabetes, who had obesity, and a huge amount of impairment. And we were able to keep them out of the hospital and prevent complications for them. Wow. Then, um, then it, uh, it, as it happened in, um, in 2012, 
uh, my wife came down with, uh, well, actually, before that, my daughter introduced me to uh, Good Calorie, Bad Calorie by Gary Topp. And I was so amazed uh, by the evidence, and I realized that my entire medical education was totally distorted. Wow. Uh, and uh, capitalizing that, I went keto at that point. Wow. And interestingly, shortly afterwards, my wife developed um, a lot of latent adult onset diabetes. Uh, and of all things, and so she had a depleted amount of insulin and her pancreas was uh, faced with antibodies. And at that point, knowing what I knew uh, and at this point about keto, it was time to go full keto uh, at this point and to get her controlled for her diabetes without using any other medications or a minimal amount of medications to keep her controlled. And then we started... Uh, in, after discovering that and the benefits and digging into the benefits of specifically uh, keto, a ketogenic diet, I realized that this was a master stroke in changing the lives of so many people with so many diseases. And we started using this uh, for our clients in a self-insured business program that had about 2,000 clients. We started flipping them over to very low carbohydrate and even ketogenic and saw stunning results. Wow. In our first year, we saved the company over $700,000 by switching people to low carb and ketogenic. And we continue that program to this day. That's badass. <laughs> that is. Well, it's really cool because, of course, you're using a natural approach. You're using um, a... A dietary approach, your whole uh, whole foods. You're getting away from processed foods. You're restricting uh, the the carbohydrates, which for really seventy percent, sixty to seventy percent of our population, um, is a, almost an addictive substance that leads to inflammatory conditions and many of the problems that we face uh, with uh, modern diseases. Yeah. Now, thirty percent of people can do fine. They can eat anything they want, uh, and those are the ones. And those are the people that make you sick because they're shoveling down all the wrong stuff and they don't show any signs of any particular problem. But the rest of us, we got to watch out for that stuff. We've got to watch out for the number of carbohydrates. But then in uh, 2014, I was working on uh, another solution for helping people with complex diseases, uh, trying to figure out a way to get them exercise. A lot of these people were impaired because of arthritis or um, and then just uh, rheumatoid arthritis or um, their obesity. How do you get people like that to exercise? They don't. And no. so one of the solutions was something called whole body vibration. Uh -huh. That's what actually happens with that is there's an oscillation of the foot. One foot goes down, the other foot goes up, does it very fast, and it stimulates natural receptors in mm -hmm. our body so that it stimulates muscle contractions and they're low level, but you can essentially get uh, the equivalent of walking a mile in one minute using these types, this type of approach. Yeah. So I was working with that for a couple of years before I, uh, I was brought to my attention uh, the cannabidiol uh, and what it was. And uh, they asked me to um, help out. Uh, some of the uh, early owners uh, asked me to um, help out and uh, consult with patients and do some of the research. So at that point, I was introduced to cannabidiol, and I had a chance to try it myself, try it in my wife and my family, and then to start using it on patients. And I was blown away by the science and by the dramatic changes that could happen with people right before my eyes. Not a matter of waiting months or weeks for things to happen, no. the effects of antidepressants or things like that. Uh, you saw you saw immediate effects, applications on areas of pain. Um, the pain goes away in five minutes. Uh, people's total appearance changes uh, many times when they get exposed to CBD. Uh, and so this was really a, a revelation to me. And exploring wow. the science on it, I've been digging into this science uh, and the literature uh, for the last four years and continue to find amazing things that are being discovered, connections with 
diseases and medical problems that I had no idea existed and successful in 75% of cases in terms of, of uh, helping them uh, at least relieving the pain and the suffering that's there when there aren't any real good alternatives. That's so amazing. That's kind of my story, and I've been carrying on with the CBD, and where possible, I I carry on with the keto. And, and I, I like to, to try to introduce keto to um, all of my patients because I think it's the best combination that there is with cannabidiol. I mean, it's what I do. I do intermittent fasting. So I eat right now eight hours a day, and I, you know, I don't eat for 16. I follow the Walls protocol as far as my dietary restrictions or whatever you want to call it. I, you know, I don't see it as restrictions. I mean, I, I feel my body through food and lifestyle, and you know, as, ketosis for me is is a wonder drug. Fasting for me is a wonder drug. And, you know, equal to me in, um, you know, with CBD and some of these other, you know, th these are these are um, natural, not, you know, uh, no, I, I don't know. I mean, we can talk about that. Are there any negative, like I don't know of a negative outcome of CBD oil and CBD, is there? Well, there are sometimes there are some side effects, but they're pretty rare and they're minor. There's no toxicity. There's never been found to be a, uh, a uh, dangerous dose has never caused any uh, any injury in anybody. Uh, I'm still searching for uh, types of you know, significant problems that might occur with it. Now, some people have don't like the taste, um, or that it, they're sensitive to it, and that they feel like that it um, may make them um, anxious or nervous. Kind of the opposite effect from most people. But these are relatively rare. Right. It doesn't happen very often. Um, and, and so I haven't seen anything. The worst thing I've seen is for people to get, well, they'll get a fatigue or they'll get a headache. Um, and it's a mild headache and it's temporary. On the other hand, you see the sort of the opposite, which is a relief from migraine. Migraines that have plagued people for years and for decades. And suddenly you're able to control the migraine and prevent them uh, at the same time. So, you know, that's about the worst that I have seen from using the cannabidiol. Now, you know, what? how does CBD actually work? Like, what is it actually doing, you know, to help us? Like, can you explain that well, in any way? Trying to figure, we're still trying to figure that out because if you look at it as part of, uh, if it's working on the endocannabinoids, you know, we have this system within our body called the endocannabinoid system, which is similar to like the endocrine system, okay. endo being inside and the endocrine system being the hormones, but the endocannabinoid, we produce our own cannabinoids right within our body. And that was only discovered about 1992. And, and there was, we learned that there was a whole system in place so that there were agonist molecules, molecules that are, are action-oriented, that, that uh, trigger receptors that cause things to happen. But there's also transport molecules, and there's enzymes that produce uh, and modulate these substances. So it has a, a host of things that are going on. Now, one of the ways that cannabidiol interacts with the body is through that endocannabinoid system. So you might ask, well, what is the endocannabinoid system? What does it do? But it maintains normal for us. And what I like to say is homeostasis. It just keeps us normal. And for a person who is perfectly fit and absolutely normal, making any kind of adjustment on the endocannabinoid system, well, there's nothing to adjust. It's fine. But for so many diseases, there is, in fact, an endocannabinoid deficiency. And so when you have this deficiency going on, then... Um, to the things that we've always done in terms of diet, exercise, sleep, um, and uh, prayer, meditation, um, acupuncture, all of those things affect the endocannabinoid system, including the phytocannabinoids like cannabidiol. So cannabidiol is interacting with the endocannabinoid system, at least in, in some range, but in more science it's gone into use, we're starting to see the connections with cannabidiol all 
all over the body with all kinds of systems. And when I say that, I'm talking about the neurotransmitters within our body. Okay. Um, you know, from at the synapses between the nerves and within the immunologic system. So controlling and regulating and modulating how our bodies react to inflammation and to other signals. Controlling the actual number of macrophage cells that are involved with any particular inflammatory process. Yeah, and cool. it's working on hormones as well. It's coordinating many of our hormones, bringing them back to normal. Um, and I think uh, one of the, the interest, interesting information uh, that's coming out is it's really doing a lot for the gut. You know, our gut has more neurotransmitters in it than the brain does. And so wow. what a prime area for cannabidiol to work on and to regulate are a lot of those neurotransmitters controlling and, and regulating and modulating uh, muscle contractions, um, even the uh, leaky cells that might be there, helping to, to strengthen those, uh, reduce the inflammation in the gut. Uh, all of these things are, are going on with cannabidiol and even as interactions with some of the microbiome that's going on. Uh, there's an amazing number of connections that I continue to find. At the current time, I've, I've uh, documented at least 129 uh, mechanisms with which CBD works on the body. Not only just the endocannabinoid system, but all kinds of other systems, right down to the nucleus and within the mitochondria. It's doing signaling properties in those organelles as well as the entire tissue of the body. So really, really exciting to see that yeah. kind of thing going on. That's unbelievable. Now, what sort of like, I mean, you give us sort of, you know, I know you talked about, oh, I'm sorry. I know you talked about, um, you know, when you were working in, in, in you know, in, in your practice and things like that. But what sort of case studies have you read about or, or, or heard about that have just sort of blown you away? I mean, I know I've heard of people that are like, you know, cancer, this, that, where they just are like, it's completely managed. And, you know, can you share any, any stories? Oh, of course. You know, I've got, I've got hundreds of stories and encounters that I've had. It's really exciting, and that's one of the exciting parts about working with Elixinol, because then I've become an international consultant, and I'm talking with people in every part of the world, whether it's Japan or Korea, um, uh, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, UK, Sweden, um, Belgium. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm able to communicate with all these countries and people coming to me with questions about how they can use CBD to address some serious problems uh, that they've been facing. And, and as a result of that, I'm, and of course, every one of the states, uh, naturally, um, and in that process, I have been able to uh, work with uh, well over a thousand patients with all different kinds of problems. And, and, and I want to tell you one story that just came up uh, that I was working with is a lady in Slovenia, um, and she has uh, multiple sclerosis, oh, but she also has trigeminal neuralgia. Oh. And the trigeminal neuralgia gives her chronic and severe pain um, in the neck area. It's uh, one of the nerves to the, that comes um, out of the, uh, the face and the spinal cord, and it has a enormous sensitivity. And as a result of injuries or some inflammation, then it becomes sensitized with so chronically giving facial pain yep. uh, for people and it's, it's very difficult to get that under control. Well, I was contacted by the justice minister for Slovenia wow. about helping this woman and I had the chance to do a video chat with her and get her started using cannabidiol. It was really, really exciting but I wasn't sure if it was going to be effective. She just wanted to get control of the pain. Um, we got started uh, with the CBD, um, and I was checking on her just recently, and the, the first report was that it wasn't helping. She wasn't getting any benefit from it. So, and I gave her further instructions, gave her some additional advice, and the next thing I know, an email yesterday told me that she had controlled the pain. The pain was gone. Wow, that's huge. 
and she was able to use her hand to write a message for the first time in years. She just didn't have that physical ability before. So she made a dramatic change and a dramatic improvement um, using the CBD. And that's the kind of thing that I see repeatedly, where people with uh, desperate, with uh, complex diseases that um, they uh, have not been able to find any solutions for, have been able to use CBD and have found uh, some relief uh, for their symptoms. It's not always complete, but they do get some relief, and it has never injured anybody in my experience. Well, that's amazing because for people that don't know, trigeminal neuralgia is what we call the suicide pain in MS. It is a pain. Dr. Walls suffers from that and suffered from or suffered from that. Um, I've met so many people. It is supposed to be one of the most excruciating pains. And to think that people are getting a level of relief from CBD to me is unbelievable. I mean, because that's like considered one of the worst pains you could ever have. That's pretty powerful. Yeah, now, I'm not going to promise that that's going to happen with everybody. I, I, and but of course I not. Think that it's, mm -hmm, I think it's a it's a, a uh, an option versus the um, the modulating neurologically modulating drugs that are given um, hand over fist right. that have uh, side effects and toxicity. And yeah, right. And addiction. Yeah, it's just terrible. Um, so, do you use CBD every day? Oh yes. Yes, I, I use it in multiple different forms. First, as, as a level of experiment on myself to see what my maximum performance is. I want to know, I want to be all that I can be, uh, in true Army fashion. I want to be every everything that I can be. I want to be absolutely at the top of my game, intellectually, um, compassionately, um, and, uh, and speaking-wise. And so uh, what I found that CBD helped me is that it improves my sleep quality, gives me rest, um, it gives me focus, um, attention to detail, getting things done, um, and it improves my vision. In, in addition, it improves the, the depth and the quality of my voice, um, the thought patterns and, and the speed of my thought patterns, and even my reflexes. i tell you an interesting story. I was uh, playing tech, uh, uh, tennis while I was in Florida for some time, I was living down there a few years ago, um, and I would go to the net, and after I started using, I'd been going to the net for, well, I'd been playing tennis for a long time, but I had been a mediocre player, but when I went to the net after using some CBD before I got there, I was able to take those serves right over the net immediately, and with a reflex and a response that, had everybody on the court amazed, and it was it was really stunning to be able to respond wow. that quickly. And so I've I've theorized that reflexes are significantly improved uh, using cannabidiol. There's better neurologic connections as a result of that. So, uh, it, and I actually put together an entire paper and approach to performance measures using CBD because I do believe that it enhances performance in a number of different ways. Um, and I think Arthur is a great person to check with. On yeah, we're going to talk about that. He's a guy who's an avid athlete. And on the Lixanol's website, for people that don't know, I would recommend you go to their website. They have so much information that is so educational and such a good resource. And I'll put the link up here. Um, but it's E-L-I-X-I-N-O-L dot com. It's pretty easy. So, um, and there's... All kinds of interviews. I mean, there's a lot. Okay, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure people know that there's even more information. Absolutely, V. Hey, hey I got one other thing to tell you because um, I, you know, how, how what kind of cases have I seen? Well, because of the response that I've seen with the CBD, I've started incorporating that in my disease management program, and I've been substituting the standard uh, tumor necrosis factor blockers and a lot of the biologics with CBD because of the, the uh, unaffordability of some of those medications that are there. And by substituting CBD, what we've seen are people will be able to avoid those, get, get very significant relief and recovery, and then improve performance at work in their jobs 
and prevention of any loss of work and disability and impairment and not having to use those medications. So we've avoided uh, patients going to surgery, um, in particular in arthritis conditions. We've helped people in cancer areas and people in chronic pain to get away from the medications they're using, asthma, COPD, um, wow. arthritis of all kinds, all of these things, and diabetes too. All these things have responded beautifully um, to the CBD in a number of different ways, but they need coaching. And it's really important that they have good coaching in that process. Now, now I know for me, um, you know, a lot of people and even myself, like I have to be honest, that's why I hesitated. I was a little, you know, I even, you know, even when, when I use cannabis, you know, I don't ever use it because I want to be high. I'm, I was using it before I even knew there was CBD for spasms. And people always say to me, oh, I don't want to use CBD because I'm going to get high. And I'm like, no, you don't get high. I mean, you don't get high from this. I've never gotten high, right? Well, that's right. I mean, there's a lot of confusion out there. They, they, they connect the cannabidiol with cannabis, and they think that it, it's uh, psychoactive. But I think that's the furthest thing from the truth. In fact, it's, it's really anti-psychoactive. It has been shown to be a very effective antidote for THC exposure, and it's been very effective in um, uh, schizophrenia as well. So wow. Of studies were done that showed that CBD was as effective in uh, schizophrenia as the best of the antipsychotic medications. In fact, I'm working with a patient right now who is in a psychiatric institute um, and helping him to get away from his psychotropic medications that have been causing him to gain excessive weight and kind of dull right. his, um, his life energies in that process. So it, it's really the opposite. And Sorry. people really can't understand that. You know, the, the effects of THC, um, there are some real benefits to see at THC. I don't discount that in terms of uh, inflammation and reducing inflammation as well as um, uh, uh, helpful as, as an anti-tumor. But it's also associated with a number of complications and problems. I'm working on the CBD side. I'm working on the hemp side from right. industrial hemp. You don't need to use marijuana. You don't have to have right. products right. that come from cannabis, marijuana type of cannabis, in order to get the real benefits uh, for, uh, uh, for the healthy part of the cannabis Plant. Yep. So we have a, a few questions here. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and stroll through what I can. I know some. Um, uh, let's see. I got cannabis hypermedia syndrome, which led to 23 days of not eating, which led to well, we're not talking about cannabis. Which waking up on the 24th day with three quarters of my body paresthesia, and on the 27th day, full neuropathy in my feet. I'm scared to death to try OCBD to try and fix the neuropathy now. What a circle. What do you well, say? You know, a lot of that sounds like it was an effect of the, of the THC. If people are really, really sensitive and they feel very concerned about that, what right. I have them do is uh, put a drop onto their skin, particularly like the back of the hand, okay. um, and start off and get, get reassurance that it's not going to cause any type of problem. Oh, and then gradually perfect. work up. Then the other part is realizing that this is a food product, and so it's sold across the country and in 23 nations as a food supplement. So it's a matter of this, this is not a drug per se. It's not a pharmaceutical type of thing. So you titrate the dose as you need to to help your particular symptoms. So if you're having problems with neuropathy or you feel like you're really, really sensitive, here's a drop on the skin. And once you get comfortable with that, maybe there's a reaction, maybe there's not a reaction, or may, maybe you have an effect or not, well then use two drops. And keep doubling okay. and increasing the dose, titrating to your particular need because everybody right. is so different. So in this type of case, I want people to make sure that it's going to work for you. It's going to work right away. So find the dose and the amount that works for you and then stick with it. Then you calculate how much that's going to take. 
Yeah, that's what I had to do. So I, I do two doses a day. And it took me, let's see, I've been pretty, um, I've been doing, yeah, I mean, we're already, wow, it's in February. So I've been at this pretty hardcore since October. And, I, you know, testing. And, I, you know, it, it is, it is, you know, and I think that's, that's sort of like anything, isn't it, Dr. Blair? You know, when it could, we all have an individual, you know, we're individuals, so we have to sort of see what works for us. Um, well, I think it even, it's true even more so with our endocannabinoid system. It has different levels of sensitivity. Some okay. people are very sensitive and some people are not sensitive at all. And if you're completely normal and you're in perfect health, then CBD is not going to have any effect on you. So, like I really like to remind everybody is that it's just going to get you back to normal. It's not going to make you a super being in any way. Right. It's just going to get, get you to be all the person that you can be. Which is perfect. Um, so someone said that when they use CBD, it increased their pain. What would you say to something like that? Well, that's a peculiar uh, response. I, I've never seen that um, in my experience. So I, I don't know what to make of it. Sometimes people can encounter a sort of a paradoxic action where uh, they get the opposite effect from other things, whether it's being coffee. I know my wife, uh, in order to go to sleep, she takes a, she has to drink a, a cup of coffee. And, and <laughs> well, I want to be your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, <laughs> wow. Uh, people have different responses yeah. and different reactions. But um, so in those cases where people feel like they're having a paradoxic reaction, then, then back off and then start again, uh, but at a very, very low dose, maybe just a, a drop or two okay. to find out what the right amount is for them. Um, it, you know, CBD has really extraordinary ability and, and studies that have been done showing anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. effects and analgesic effects, uh, as well as calming. Now, I, what I like to do is have people, while I'm watching them or on video or if I'm listening to them on the telephone, take their first dose. And I really like to hear the wow effect. And if they don't get a wow effect, then I usually double the dose. I say, okay. well, yeah, take the same amount again. Um, hold that in your mouth and swish it for a couple minutes and let's talk during that time. And let's see what kind of changes that you notice. Number one is I see changes in the voice a relaxation and a deepening of the voice, and God forbid they start talking faster. I mean, that's, that's hell. <laughs> and then uh, you also see changes in the vision. There's an improvement in the, the resolution of what they're looking at. So their vision is clear with more defined, um, and colors pop. It is superb to see those kinds of changes, and people can notice that. Uh, so really right. positive. And, and the other telltale sign of CBD is laughter. They always laugh. Oh, well, that's nice. Using CBD. And it's, it's appropriate. It's not hilarious. It's right. a matter of, hey, I've got a chuckle. I'm making some jokes. There's some humor. Obviously, that's a sign of the improved mood. And that's the kind of thing that you get for people who are depressed. You get a resolution, an improvement of mood within a matter of minute, minutes as opposed to the SSRI drugs that right. take weeks or even months in order to get a benefit. Yeah, no, that, uh, um, so someone said they've been using it for a couple of years, having great success, but they get a lot of cavities. Is there something to do to prevent that? Does using CBD known to cause cavities? Is there a correlation there? No, I've never heard of anything of that nature. Um, I, you know, I don't, I don't know what to make of it. I mean, I think it's ideal for CBD should calm uh, any type of gingivitis, which is really the, the right. great plague of the problems in a, uh, the, our dental world and protecting those gums. But um, I I don't know any, any, any connection to okay. um, dental problems except for relieving pain from, from uh, dental uh, discomfort. Yeah, I would think with the anti-inflammatory it would help. Um, okay, someone says, would I need a consult before trying it because they have MS? They also had a thyroidectomy, hyperthyroidism, uh, hyperparathyroidism, and osteoarthritis. They take no prescriptions except Synthroid. 
and everything else is natural for them. I don't do you think? Well, if you're facing some complex diseases, then it'd be great if you found uh, a doctor who could really uh, be um, knowledgeable about cannabidiol and the cannabinoids and give you some guidance about what uh, what to do um, and the idea about the dose that might be involved and look over your situation. Now, you're not, uh, this person's not on any medications of any significance, so no. you don't really have to worry about any problems. But for a lot of people, there seems like about the average is about 15 drugs at the present time. And uh, so there's always a lot of concern uh, about that and um, figuring out what the right amount is um, and the right blend and combination um, could be challenging. And uh, also, if you've got a serious problem, you're going to be wary about trying something new. No. So with a consult, you'd like to have that reassurance and the guidance as if you're facing something that, like this that is quite new and you don't necessarily have the support of your medical team. Well, and the thing I love is that Elixinol does have medical, you can consult with a doctor, right? Right. Yeah. That's so, right, exactly right. So Elixinol, when you become a customer of Elixinol, you can consult with the medical doctors. So that might be something that you might want to consider you know, based on her concerns. That was for Heather. Um, will CBD oil result in a positive drug test? Well, I'm not going to promise anybody a negative drug test, um, but uh, there is the possibility of developing, getting a false positive for a test, test for a THC, a, a urine drug test. And so I, I, we need to be cautious about that. There's no significant amount of THC um, in the industrial hemp uh, elixinol product, but um, you could get a false positive, and you know, that would require some, uh, you should require conf confirmation tests in order to verify that, but it, they seem to be rarely done. So if you're in that situation about testing for uh, for uh, the THC and the urine testing, and you can still use CBD, but you need to use it um, either in a topical way or maybe a vaporized way so that okay. you don't get any large molecule exposure. Wow, that, I, I learned something there. Um, okay, someone's asking about C, what's the difference between CBD oil and CBD pills, which I have the pills right here, and I have the oil, so here's... Oh, wait, wait, where's the camera? Well, I saw it. You know, each of the formulations is slightly different and has uh, people respond differently to it. So it's uh, a matter of taste and, and um, compliance. But one of the problems that I run into with the, uh, the capsules is that people swallow them and they may or may not feel any effects. And it may take some time like up to two hours before right. people will feel the effect. And so if there's any doubt if the capsules are working, I have people bite the capsule and swish what's in the capsule. Oh, really? And I like trying to get that wow effect. Yeah, so if you can get the wow effect and you from biting it and getting that direct effect, then you know it's working. It just may be that by swallowing okay. it and going through the digestive tract, then it's, it's going through the liver first and it's being metabolized to too great an extent. So you're not getting the full effects of CBD when it comes across as the mucous membrane. Wow. Okay. All right. So let's see what we have here. Um, all right. Should you use on a regular basis or as needed? Now, can I, before you answer this, I just want to share with everyone that I've been doing an experiment. Whatever. Oh. Here we go. Whenever I add anything to my life, uh, I do a 90-day experiment, and I change nothing else but that one thing. So I've been experimenting. First, I got what I thought was the proper dosing, and then since then, I've been doing this experiment. And I have to tell you that I use it every day, and where I – again, I have, I have to assume it has to do with inflammation or maybe with nerve endings. I have a tremendous amount of hypersensitivity around my neck like I can't wear necklaces or like it's it's super hyper 
and it, it's sometimes very painful and I have a lot of herniation in, in the back of my neck and my disc. My neck is feeling like a lot better. And I think that it, it's only noticed since I've been doing it every day with what I have identified as my proper dose. Isn't so that interesting do, how subtle it is? How, how that it um, kind of, uh, it, it's sort of withdrawal of pain and symptoms. And yeah. a lot of people don't even notice those particular changes. In fact, that's one of the problems that I, that I have with patients is that they say, well, I don't feel anything. Well, you're not going to feel high. And so yeah. it's a matter of withdrawing the pain and the other pain signals. So you just feel normal. And most people don't get too excited about feeling normal. Um, <laughs> but, uh, it, uh, and, and they also, if they're dedicated to some other thing uh, that they believe in, whether it's uh, special light or exposure to other substances or a special diet they're on, invariably they will say, oh, it's the diet. Oh, it's this other thing that I'm doing. As what has made me help, and maybe CBD um, helped it with those things. It's, uh, it's a very interesting phenomena, and I do get about thirty percent of patients who show obvious signs of improvement deny that it's helping them in any way. So sometimes I like to have people, um, as you've done, be is keep a log, mm -hmm. and then ask family members to comment on oh, nice. uh, their progress or their lack of progress. Very smart. Okay, so we have time for like one one more um, question. Let's see. Okay, I have primary orthostatic tremors. Have you found that CBDs help? CBD helps with tremors. Unfortunately, not. And let me say that um, in a kind of a, a blanket statement. Uh, if people have, um, uh, let's say Parkinson's, you've got the tremor with Parkinson's, or you'll have a familial tremor. I haven't seen a dramatic improvement, um, and some people have reported benefit, but it's about 50-50 from what I've been uh, monitoring, and not everybody comes forward uh, with that information. For what me. about keto? So it's sort of mixed. Does keto help with tremors like it does with epileptic seizures, I wonder? I think it's very possible it could, but mm -hmm. most, it's very difficult to get people to keto unless they're being, uh, if they're self-motivated or they're involved with some intensive coaching. Yeah, true. Well, if you're interested in keto, you know, Paleo Boss Lady Page can help support that journey. Um, and let's see. Yeah, I think that's... Um, well, I want to say one more thing, V, and that is that, um, you know, I didn't speak to it earlier, but keto actually works with some of the same mechanisms and cell signaling that CBD does. They actually overlap in signaling of the nucleus and epigenetic changes. And so there's uh, interesting overlaps in the PPAR receptors of the nucleus that trigger sort of cascades of genetic enzymes that are produced. Wow. So that's probably like when you were talking about mitochondrial support and all that, just like keto, right? So it's... Right. Wow. Exactly. It's doing many, much of the same thing. That's amazing. Wow. Wow. I mean, I didn't know. I'm kind of blown away. I feel like I need to go to school <laughs> and learn even more about this. Um, I'm really excited that we have two more um, evenings this week, tomorrow and Thursday night, where we're going to be doing this stuff. And I just want to, I'm sorry, I'm holding a phone. I, I know it's, it's, we're not always the most professional, but this is about getting the information out there. And sometimes you just have to, you know, you got to roll with it. Um, okay. So if you're interested in a PDF booklet that was put together, it's actually beautiful, with all of this information, send me an email at v at paleobosslady.com. Please write in the subject, I consent to be signed up so that we can send it to you. And then say, Paleo Boss Lady and Elixinol, E-L-I-X-I-N-O-L. Now, Elixinol. Then we will send you the book. I will also send you a code for a discount from Elixinol so that you can try these products. I'm going to show you, um, you know, just some of the things that, that I like to use. This I like to use before bed. It's a little, you know, right under the tongue. The pills, I got to tell you, I, I think it was because you had to wait two or three hours. 
I just felt like this wasn't really happening for me. But now that I learned about opening them, I'm going to do a little experiment. These are hard to come by, and I waited. Um, this is like a little a little syringe. I just put it. This is what I use in the morning. And then sometimes if I feel I want a midday, this is my midday, and this is in coconut oil. It's all organic, and um, it's the highest quality stuff. Now, Elixinol does have a doctor on staff. You can call and ask medical questions. They're the only people that do that. Okay, so that's really powerful. So if you guys have questions that we haven't been able to answer, or maybe you just don't have something right now, and you might later, I don't want you to stress about it. I want you to know that they're there for you. Okay, so I'm going to put their link and do all this stuff as soon as we get off this so you guys can get all the information that you want. Email v at paleobosslady.com, okay? And then I will send you, I will get everything. I'll start sending the emails out tomorrow. Um, for the people that do this right away. Now, this video is going to be up here, and it's going to be live. It's going to be you can watch it whenever. So, if you're watching this outside of it being live, please, I will get a notice if you write a comment, um, and I'll try and answer it. But please feel free to email me at any time at v at paleobosslady.com. Doctor Blair, I, you blew me away. I love you. Oh, did he leave well, me on? Hey, v, I'm glad I could be with you and talk to your audience. With you. Oh my gosh, like I had no idea. I mean, you know, I think sometimes I get a little bit, you know, all about me in the healing journey, and I don't always think about how much this could mean to others. And I just knew that, you know, in the last year, that there were so many people reaching out to me specifically about CBD, and I felt like the, the heavens opened up and my friend Win Wendy introduced me to the Elixinol products, which therefore brought me to you guys. I mean, I at a time when my community was asking me for help, and I, you know, I, I just have to say thank you because you know I, I'm already having benefits, and you know I will write a blog about it, and I will report after 90 days. But so far, this is what I'm seeing, and you know, I was someone that lived in traction. Like traction was my drug of choice because my neck is just so jacked up and um, so sensitive. And never would I have imagined that CBD would have been, would change. I mean, I can't wear a necklace. That's how jacked up it is. And I don't have like, even touching it doesn't feel as sensitive. So I'm, you know, here you go. Another thing in my bag of tricks that's really changing my body. It's amazing. Okay, everyone. Well, it's been a great opportunity to speak with you and um, uh, and speak with your audience, and I'm delighted to be able to talk to everybody uh, about it. and combining the keto uh, with uh, the CBD. What a great combination. Yep, we're same, same. You and I are same, same. Um, and I bet you a lot of our audience. So, um, okay, well, thank you so much, and I know it's, uh, you know, you've taken a lot of time out. And I appreciate you putting up with our technical difficulties. And to all of my followers and listeners, I'm very sorry about that. And I wish you all a really good night. And I'll post everything like I promised. Have a good night, Dr. Blair. Thank you very much. Right. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye you can night, find everybody. them at Elixinol everywhere. They're on Twitter, on Facebook, their, their website, they're on Instagram, everywhere. Okay, bye, everybody.